This is the plaintiff, Renee Johnson Samuels. She says she hired the defendant to make her a wig, and two weeks later, some of the hair started falling out. The wig was constructed in an extremely poor way. And when she told the defendant about the problems she was having, she accused her of handling the wig incorrectly. Huh? She's suing for $549, the cost of the wig, and lost wages. This is the defendant, Lorraine. She says the plaintiff brought her a wig to fix, which she did, and everything was fine. She gives a seven-day warranty on her work. The plaintiff started complaining after the seven days about hair falling out. And to be nice, she said she'd fix it. The woman never showed up. It's obvious she was mishandling the hair piece. And if she wants it repaired now, she's going to have to pay for it, because nothing in life is free. She's accused of wigging out. <laughs> the defendant has filed a counter suit for $500 for slander and lost wages. All parties, please use your right hand. You see it? Come to order, please. Litigants have been sworn, Your Honor. Thank you, Doug. You're welcome, ma'am. Hi. Hi. So you've had a wig made in the past by the defendant, yes. correct? And you loved it. Yes. Then you had a wig made by somebody else, and you went, why didn't I go back to the defendant? So then you had that wig, which was made by somebody else, brought to her to remake a wig for you. Did I get it right? No. No. Completely. Where did I go wrong? <laughs> I had a wig made by Lorraine, and I like it. I had someone do a wig for me. I took it apart. I asked Lorraine to make a wig for me. I gave her the hair. From that second wig? Yes. Okay, that's was what I thought brand, I said, but yeah. okay. All right, so then she makes you that, a wig from those parts? Yes. All right, and you pick it up on what day? December 6th. And when you picked it up, did you like it? Yes, I did. Okay, did you look at it? Did you inspect it? Did I didn't lift it up and look at it because I came from work and I was kind of like rushing. So Why were you rushing? Because I, I had somewhere to go afterwards. Right, but I mean, you looked at it, right? You, I didn't. Was there something wrong with it? There was, at the time, no. Okay, so you take it home and what happens? I take it home, everything was fine, and then I noticed that as I was wearing it, it kind of looked like it was I th what I thought was an uneven cut. I realized that it was, when I lifted up, it was the track hanging down. Okay. So I text her and I let her know that there was- How a... long after picking it up did you notice that? Two weeks. Had you been wearing it? Yes. All that time? Yeah. Day in, day out, all right. So Not day you... in, day out, because it's a wig, it's removable. Yeah, I know. <laughs> all right, but are you taking it off yes. and wearing it every day? Yes. So, right, so when uh, you text her a couple weeks later and mm -hmm. what happens? I text her and I let her know, I was like, one of the tracks fell out and I, up, upon it falling out, me looking at it, I noticed that the way it was sewn, it has a lot of gaps in it. And it compared to the way that you sew my last wig, the way that it's sewn, it's gonna cause for me to have to repair it a lot. And can you sew it and close up the gaps for me and repair it? And she Is this said, your finger in a gap? Yes, those are the gaps. So I asked her if she could sew it and close up the gap for me. She said, yes. I said, okay, let me know when you're gonna be in the shop at seven. And she never responded to me. And did I, you ever follow up? I didn't follow up with it because when I, around the time when I texted her, it was around the holiday, it was New Year's time. So I figured like, okay, it's probably the holidays. I'm not gonna really stress her. I didn't think kind of the dynamics between us, I wasn't gonna pressure her around the holiday time because people is traveling and they're with their family. All right, um, so December 30th, you send her a text. Good afternoon, two weeks ago, one of the tracks came loose on the wig you recently made for me. I noticed you didn't sew it the way you did with my other wig. It has too many gaps between where it's sewed down, which is gonna lead to me making frequent repairs. Can I come in so you can close up the? You all, you screenshot this, so I don't know what the rest of your text oh. is. Do you have it in your phone? Yes, I do. In so you can close up the, the only thing missing was the word gaps. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Close up the gaps. And she says, yes. Now this is on December 30th. Then what happens? So, and then I, and You don't the, hear from her? You don't, you don't follow up right no, away? No, I asked her when can when I come could in she, at yeah, seven? Yeah, the last text says, let me 
what day you're available at 7. I yeah. think that's pretty clear. That's yeah. let me know what day you're available at 7. Radio silence from her. Mm -hmm. And then radio silence from you, too, until February 4th, where you say, good morning, you never got back to me. That's when February the second 4th track is, came um, a month and a couple of days later. Mm -hmm. Good morning, you never got back to me on when you will be available at 7 to secure the tracks. Better on my wig, and another track has come loose. That's two tracks in less than two months. To which you respond, I'll fix the two tracks, anything else I'm going to charge you for, which is diametrically opposed to what you had said on December 30th. Right? Did you forget what you'd said on December 30th? No, or? Um, December 30th, I was booked in a salon, but my policy states after seven days, it's not my problem. But I love what I do. So when she texted me December 30th, I said, come in, yes. I didn't respond because I was busy. But most of my clients... I know, but then there's a moment when you're not busy. In 30 days, you've stopped, looked at your phone, played on your phone, looked up all of your, your incoming messages, looked, but you chose to ignore hers. No, I didn't choose to ignore her. Well, then I, you forgot it. I for, probably forgot. But right, and that's fine, yes. except for that when she says, hey, now a second, what I expect your answer to be, oh, yeah, come on in tomorrow at 7, instead of, I'll sew the two tracks, but I'm not, I'm not sewing any gaps because too much time has passed. When did it become too much time has passed? Because you didn't answer her. When she texted me February 4th, I said, come in a salon. I will fix those gaps. But anything other than that, I will have to charge you. Maybe. I hear you. Now right. you hear me. On December 30th, what she said was, can I come in so you can close the gaps? And your answer was yes. Yes, yes. So you were going to close gaps yes, December 30th, gonna, gonna close but now it. you're going to charge her for closing gaps on February 4th. Right. Because honestly, Your Honor, it's past my, my time, seven, my seven-day policy time. But I was going to tell her to come in anyway. I was going to do close the gaps for her anyway, not a Free problem. Free or charging her? Two tracks are going to be sold now for free that she texted me about on and December 30th. And now you're going to charge her for the gap. I'm going to have to charge her for the gap because I feel like it's been 30 days. and I Right, don't know but it's been 30 days because you ignored her for 30 days. I wouldn't, ma'am, I wouldn't say I ignored you her. You did not respond to her. In other words, she didn't drop the ball. If I'm looking at this, it's you who dropped the ball because you didn't answer her. Yes, she didn't stalk you, but right. you didn't answer her. So pretending like, you know what, you waited too long is kind of weird when it's you're the one who owed her an answer, right? Right. Okay. Have you taken it to anybody else to find out what it would cost to fix? No, I didn't. But when the first track came out, I did have somebody repair it for me. How much did that cost you? They did it for me for free. What about the second track? The second track is still hanging. I didn't repair it. Because when I contacted her the second time I, and she said no, I just left it like that and told her I'll take her to court. And that was that? Yeah. Wow. All right, so now you're suing for the two twenty five you paid for the wig. Uh, but you have somehow uh, blossomed that into a $549 lawsuit by adding lost wages. Because mm -hmm. what? The time off that I take to, to, win, to go file the claim in court because I blatantly asked her. I didn't want any money back. All I wanted her to do was just to repair it. She when refused to do it. When you say that you have a seven, your policy is seven days, where is that written or how does a person know that? Where is um, that? It's written on my website. I told her that and it's on my social media. But Your Is Honor, it on your receipt that the person gets? Um, no, I didn't give her a receipt. But Your Honor. Oh, that's how, that is how people prove right. what their policy is. If you go to Macy's and they say returns, well Macy's isn't going to say that because they'll return used toilet paper. But if you go to uh, somewhere else, you know, uh, and it'll say you have 15 days to return that you know they can't deny it because when they show you the receipt right. it's right on their receipt but if you're just taking cash and, right. and you know that's kind of the you win some you lose some on that right but like i said your honor when she texted me december february 4th i told her come in i will fix the tracks but anything other than i will have to charge yes her. i know that's my objection but is my that thing you said is, that i understand that you said but, that i've read it four times so why didn't you, my thing is Ma'am, why didn't you come in? If she would have came in the salon... She needs to stalk you? She asked no. her question and you ignored her. No, but I told her on February 4th she can come in. And yes, she would... but February 4th, you changed the deal. February 4th, you're saying, I'll have to charge you to close gaps. Right. But on December 30th, she's like, look, this doesn't look like the other one. Can I come in? Will you close the gaps? Will you fix the tracks? And you're, yes, not yes, but I'm going to have to charge you, just yes. Right. So that looked like everything was fine December 30th. Right. She says, great, what day will you be there after 7? Radio silence for me for a month. And then your answer to why you're not going to honor December 30th statement is, well, you waited a month. Well, she, yes, she waited a month. She didn't chase you. She didn't show up unannounced. She didn't do what a lot of other litigants do. But by the same token, it's hard to 
to, to castigate her when you're the one who doesn't answer the text. You left her hanging there. So now what do we do? Because I don't want to put you guys in contact again because it's unpleasant now. So exactly how are we going to get this fixed? Well, typically, your side will come here with a, an estimate from someone else of what it would cost to get the, the gap zone. But you've come in here without that. So now how, what, how exactly are we going to do this? You think you're just going to get double what you pay for the wig? That's how we're going to fix it? Not really, because what you're missing is getting two tracks fixed and gaps shut. I don't know what that costs. How am I going to know what that costs? Anybody else here do hair that's not affiliated with the two litigants? I don't think so. So now what? Welcome back to the People's Court. I'm Harvey Levin. The plaintiff had the defendant make her a wig. Turns out there were gaps in the wig and she wants them fixed. But the defendant says the plaintiff took too long to get back to her. The plaintiff says the defendant is the one who ignored her. Will the plaintiff get the full value of the wig? Let's go back into the courtroom. What say you it costs to sew up the gaps? Miss, if so she... You didn't just call me miss, I'm, did you? I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, miss. That's okay. I, I apologize. I know Judge it was a mistake. I apologize. I'm just pointing it out. Um, I love what I do. She's a returning client for two years, from, from two years ago. I told her if she would have came in the salon, I would have closed okay, the gap. Okay, you're just repeating yourself now. She, are you going to tell me something new and interesting, or are you going to just repeat yourself again? Oh, I apologize. All right. I tell me wanna, something I new and interesting. To, How are we going to solve this? I, she could have came in the salon. Now she could have. What are we going to do? That's what I'm asking. Fix the problem. How are we going to fix the problem? Sewing in the tracks. What does it cost to sew in the track? to sew the I tracks? I was going to charge her $65 for two tracks and probably wash her wig and restyle it again. And if she would have came in the salon and gave me a problem, you know what? I'm going to do it because I love what I do. And she knows that. So it was not a problem for me to fix the wig. I just felt like she could have came in. And what's your counterclaim for $500? Lost wages and what's the slander? Slandering my name. By? Um, Did she post something? Did she write a negative review? Did she what? I feel like um, she, on the 13th, she referred to asking me about a quote for another wig and the person didn't get the wig 13th probably. 13th of December. Yes. Probably because she probably like, you know what, don't go to her. She messed my wig up. Look at the gaps. So. And what's wrong with that? That's well, how she feels. I feel like that's slander in my it's name. It's not. It's not. Because we're all, it's a free country. We all have our opinions. Right. And we cannot, can you imagine if we could all get sued for what we tell our friends? Go there, don't go. That restaurant's great. That restaurant's right. awful. Lawsuit. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, it, doesn't, it doesn't work that way. Here's what's going to happen. On your lawsuit against her, zero. On your lawsuit against her, I'm going to award you $100 so you can take it somewhere else to get the stuff that you need to get fixed, fixed on it. I think that's fair. Good luck, folks. So the plaintiff is going to get money to get the wig fixed, but not by the defendant. As you come prancing out here, what are you thinking now? You I, waited too long to help her. Why didn't you respond? I mean, I, I, was, I was busy, but I definitely would have fixed the problem with, with if she would have came to the salon. Yeah, but you said you're going to charge her. It was maintenance fee. It was two months, and it was my but policy. not originally. Yeah, no. yeah, yeah, you're right. Well, you're right. You see? You know, no, no, no bad, no bad. No bad, you lose. No bad, yeah, okay. right. Okay, all, right. all right, on your all way. Right. All right, Ms. Johnson Samuels. It's a mouthful, Johnson Samuels, you know. <laughs> you get 100 bucks. Now, you can. do you know somewhere else you can take the wig to get it fixed? I actually don't want to take the wig for somebody else to have to redo somebody else's job. Yeah, but somebody could fix it. It is fixable. The whole thing needs to be redone. Well, Two tracks is not enough. I would rather just discard it. Start and, from scratch? Yes, that's okay. what I would rather do. You know, I'm an, I don't even know what a track is. I keep hearing that term <laughs> track all the way through this case, but I don't have time to find out now, okay? okay. Thank you very much. Thank Congratulations. You. Take right. your wig and your tracks. Okay. <laughs> all right, Harvey. So, Doug, you should know that just because an item gets damaged, that doesn't mean the person who owns the item gets the value of that item. If it can be fixed, as in this case, repaired, uh, that is the measure of damages.